All right, howdy folks. Uh, welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what we're gonna do is crack uh, this copy of Silver Surfer number three. And there's a couple of reasons I think that this one's a good candidate for a bump. So one of which is you'll notice it's an 8.5 grade and I'll hold that up there so you can capture the CGC serial uh, as we look at it. But it turns out on this issue, at least at the moment, there's a relatively large gap in fair market value between an 8.5 and a 9. And so I think it might be possible to pick up that 0 0.5 bump and get it into a range that's more highly um, sought after and increase the value. So for, at least for this copy, given that particular gap at the moment, I think it's worth making the gamble. So as you've seen me talk about in other videos, when considering a crack, the first thing you wanna do is take that CGC serial number, put it into the CGC system and look up the greater notes. And in this particular issue, it says light bends to cover, small crunch right top of back cover, and very light um, st spine stress lines to cover. And if we scroll down here, you can see some of those very light spine stress lines. So there's some right there, there's one right there, um, there's one right there. It's hard to break color on these uh, exact copies, but what I do wanna say is that, you know, when you see those comments, you have to kind of gauge their relative importance and significance for the book. And very light spine stress lines, the cover is something you can see even at a 9.6. And so that bottom one there, I'm gonna ignore. Um, because I think you can get a bump with that. Uh, then we have to go looking for light bends to cover, and I think they're gonna be right over here, right on the logo of the Silver Surfer. So if I hold that and the glare right there, you can kind of see that going across his foot and a little bit right there. Um, and, you know, there might be a little bit more up top here on the very, very top edge, um, right here by my thumb, if you can see that. So um, that to me looks like some bending right there. And we've got some very light bends here. And these do look to me to be very light bends. I would be surprised if they break gloss. Um, that's something you have to consider. But I think these will be okay. And then on the back, it says small crunch right top back corner. And so this is the right top back corner, and we can see if we can find it there in the glare. Um, kind of right in there, you can kind of see it. It's a pretty small crunch, but I think it is uh, actually there. Um, kind of right by my thumb, yeah, right there. It looks kind of like the bends on the front. You can just see it hit the glare a little bit right there. Um, and so that to me uh, has also a high probability of pressing out nice and flat. And so at least on this book, the way that it was previously graded, I think the uh, bends here, uh, the bend there and the bend on the back cover um, were what was lowering the overall grade to an 8.5. Um, looking at it, you might say, hey, wait a minute, this has a grease pen date on it, uh, and that is certainly true. You might ask why that's not in the grader notes or if that impacts the grade. Um, these kind of date marks, especially in grease pen like that, were common in the 60s, and so this one's from 1968. And so that's tolerated without a significant impact on the grade at a 9.6. Um, and so, you know, definitely in this era, I'm not even going to mess with that. I'm just going to leave it uh, and not even try to erase it or polish it up because it's part of kind of the history of the book. And it's not going to impact the grade at all. Now, the one thing that does make me hesitate a little bit about this crack is if we look very closely right here, um, a little bit right there, a little bit right there. And if we look on the bottom, we can see a little bit more right, right there and a little bit more right along here. So I think this book has what I would consider to be very minor edge wear. Um, and as, if, as long as CGC considers it very minor edge wear, uh, they'll let you get away with a little bit of it on a 68 book, probably up to a 9.4. It only becomes an issue if they call it, you know, true edge wear, in which case it might actually limit the grade to an 8.5 all by itself if they see that edge wear or, or maybe a nine. Um, and, and there is a little bit of damage to this corner. You can see it's folded over there and I almost wonder if that happened is during the encapsulation process because you'd think somebody would have folded that over uh, ahead of time beforehand. But anyway, those are going to be the things that make me look at this. All in all, I think it's worth the dice roll because I think these biggest defects, the bends, uh, and all these spots should be press outable. And so with that kind of a summary, let's go ahead and get cracking here. And as always, I like to start in the top center there and try to wedge the screwdriver in um, and then just work towards the center posts. Oops, lost my screwdriver in the middle there. And again, I like to do that because it keeps the screwdriver away from the comic book. 
And there we go. That's the crack on the corner there that we were looking for. Uh, move on over to this side then. Once you're down the edges, now it's time to just kind of gently take that edge of the screwdriver right down the seam. And again, you don't need to go all the way to the bottom. I usually like to go about two thirds on the other side here. going for a little bit of a ride so let me tip that over and get the tag out nope it's gonna be stubborn and hang out there all right so uh, let's get this one this one's a square bound so it's a little bit fatter i'm just gonna use the edge of the screwdriver here on the very very edge away from the comic just to pull the inner well forward because it's kind of tucked under there there we go lift that on up again i'm just gonna go straight out not put any horizontal stress on it whatsoever in this case, our tag is hanging out in there, so we'll get that on out. There we go. All right, cool. Step one done. Now, uh, this inner well here, it looks like it's got a pretty nice gap on the top. It's not quite as wide as I'd like. I'm going to give it just a gentle tap down to try to push it as far down as possible. And then again, we're going to put the um, broad end down. And then I got my box knife right here to try to go through the seam on the square bound. So I'm going to start here. Getting a glare on the edge here, so what I do not want to do. I'm going to do this one slightly different. And go only through the top, not through all of it. Did not get it all the way through that top edge there. Square bounds are a little bit more difficult because they're an extra fat space to try to try to work through. straight up to the best of my ability there and just make sure I'm not hitting a corner on that side. Edge is clear. go let's see how much we we got on the bends there if i hold it on up you can, indeed can see that is the area where it's bent it actually looks a lot worse out of the slab than it does in the slab but that indeed is the bends we got a pretty big finger bend right there on the al between the l and the v on silver and this part does look a little rough right there 
So the rest of it looks pretty good. Crunch on the back. Let's see if we can see it now through the, yeah, right there. So that's our crunch. And then you know, the rest of it actually looks really sharp as you'd expect for an 8.5. So there we are. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do a separate video on how I set up my stacks for a square bound. But importantly, we got this one out of the slab. All right, everybody, welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what I want to do is just talk about how I set up a press for a square bound book. Um, square bounds are the books that have uh, glue inside, and so these are constructed fundamentally differently than books that have staples. These do have staples um, through the stacks right here and right here, but unlike a normal issue, the staple is not on its side. And the wraps are kind of glued together inside there and the cover's kind of glued on um, underneath that space. And then there's staples that go right through the center of the book, but they go through vertically. So if you open this on up, you can see that they're quite large staples. They often um, cause relatively large distortion around them. Uh, and you can see there, there's even some stress lines on the bottom one, a uh, little bit of tears on the paper. And so that's pretty common for these. And unfortunately on the front cover where the tongs of the staple are, so you can see right in there and right here. Um, sometimes those staples actually punch through the cover and they almost always leave an indent on the cover, even after a press. And it's really, really hard um, to deal with that. It's also really common to see these kind of scrunches up that you have here um, right along the edge there. That's not spine damage. That was just a glued kind of crooked. And you can kind of see that across some of the other ones. Uh, you know, on this copy of Silver Surfer number three, there's this horizontal line that kind of goes through the spine all the way down uh, and along here too. And so that kind of stuff is pretty common on these issues, um, but you can still press them and you can still get a lot of the finger bends out and a lot of the kind of the light cover wrinkling. And sometimes you have to do that after stain removal or whitening. And so if you scroll through my before and after pictures on Facebook and Instagram, you'll see that I've done uh, several copies of Giant Size X-Men number one, which is probably the most popular issue. I get that has this particular construction, but I've done other ones. So, you know, the Fantastic Four annual number one I've done, and, you know, I've done a number of these Fantastic Four annual number sixes as well. So the basics of what I'm going to talk about are all here in the comic book CPR book. And so if you don't have a copy of this, this is exactly the kind of thing that you want to go to the book for to get a desk reference, because you're going to want the temperature and the duration and the time as well as the stacking layer, and that's all gonna be there. Um, for these square bounds, they come in a variety of thicknesses, and that's what I wanted to draw your attention to in the video. And so if we see this one here, you can kind of see the Fantastic Four special on the side. Um, and they had different numbers of pages depending on what was in there. So some of the thickest ones are 72 pages. And you can see, even though these look similar, they actually are a different thickness. And they're gonna be significantly thicker than if I just, open the turn these all on the side um, so you can see the what if one here is the the thinnest of these and the fantastic four um, number 200 is uh, also th much thinner and you'll see this on the modern prestige comics as well so the first appearance of bane vengeance of bane number one uh, that also is a square bound as is batman the killing joke uh, and those need to kind of follow a similar um, setup and these, though, what we're looking forward is when that press pushes the pressure down, we want to make sure we're supporting that space where the staple is, as always. And to do that, what I'm actually going to use is um, printer paper. And so, you know, when setting one of these up, what I do is open it on up and slide a sheet of paper in there. And then I'm going to go, usually I go four pages, uh, like so, and then I drop another sheet in. Um, and I'm not worrying about getting it too lined up here since this is just an example. Um, but, you know, you get four pages and then a sheet of paper. And what you're doing there is slowly building up a puff of the, the comic stack. And that way, when there's pressure put down, you know, those inner pages compress quite a bit. And so you need to be able to have something there to push uh, back against the cover to flatten it out. Now, what you'll notice on the edge here is that because of the way that this is constructed, these inner pages never get all the way to the center. And you can't do that because they're glued in there um, and the wraps are like that. So what I try to do is get them as tight as I can um, when manually putting them in there. And then before I put this in the press, I put it on its side and just give it, you know, three or four very, very gentle taps like that down um, to try to get the paper to slide as tight uh, close to the spine as possible. Now that's a good start, but if you um, press this, then you always have to worry about collapsing that spine down. And so what I have here are kind of the, the secret of doing this, in my opinion, and these are pre-made um, 
setups and what I did to do these is I took backer boards and I cut the backer board in half and I was very careful because the the side that the um, company machines is obviously a very tight smooth corner and the one that I slit down the middle was much much rougher and so then I kind of separated the the piles and I have my arrows going here and so this is a, a much smoother side and I have a whole bunch of these made in slightly different thicknesses um, and in here I also have a couple of sheets of paper if I really need to fine-tune it and so I think I have about four or five of these ranging from very, very thin that I would probably use on that what if number one. Um, with like this one, you can see is only two backer boards uh, with maybe, uh, oops, sorry, it's three backer boards with a sheet of paper in there. Uh, appears to be the size that I decided was my thinnest. And then for those 72 page early Marvel giants, you know, I might need four or five backer boards to, to get the right thickness there. Um, and when judging the size of this, what I like to do is kind of put it, oh, and by the way, I have arrows here. Um, and one thing that I did when I started uh, was that I wasn't taping these. I was just kind of guessing, and I actually got one that went underneath the square bound um, and caused some damage to it. I was able to fix that, and that book ultimately got a 9.6, which I was pretty excited about, but it uh, was a lot more stressful than I wanted it to be. And so because of that, now after I have these... Um, uh, stacked together. I have them taped with my painter's tape on the top and the bottom edge. The tape is nowhere near the comic, um, but it does hold them together and keeps them sturdy. And so what I do is kind of put that um, edge against the comic and I want to feel kind of the lip going from here to here. And this one has a pretty big gap at the moment and so that's not going to be big enough. And then if I put this on over here, you know, I can still feel that lip. And so you want to be able to feel the lip, but maybe only, you know, five millimeters or so. This is a pretty big, maybe uh, eighth of an inch, if not a little bit bigger, three sixteenths gap there on the end as I slide from here up onto the comic. So you need a little bit of a gap because like I said, the paper in here and the pages will compress much more than this will. And so under the stress of that press, um, you're going to want a little bit of a space above and um, below so that you can actually apply the pressure to the cover. If this is bigger than the book, then the press is going to stop here and it's not going to compress into the book and you're not going to apply any pressure. So you need it there to help support the spine and you want to make sure that this stack is uh, very, very slightly thinner than the overall comic book. And I'll show you that here in the press in a little bit, how I set it up because I also will slide this against the back of the press to make sure it's nice and connected. Um, but that's mainly the trick here, I think, and the most important thing is to make a bunch of these of slightly different sizes. And, it, you know, uh, as you do this, you'll be able to adjust and get more of them. And then once you have a whole pile of them, you know, odds are good you can find one that's close enough for whatever issue. So uh, that's kind of the stacking layer I use. And then again, the support here on the spine. And we'll show you how you get that set up in the press in a minute. All right, thanks. We'll hop over to the press next. All right, everybody, welcome back here to Top Comics Pressing. We're going to take a peek at how I go ahead and set up a press for a square bound book. So this is the Silver Surfer number three that we cracked out of a CGC slab. Uh, it has already been hydrated and I've uh, put my stacking materials under it here to try to make the video uh, as productive as possible. So here is my Tussie 15 by 15 clamshell press. So this is the one that's recommended in the Captain Mike comic book CPR book. Um, and what I wanted to show you is how I have my press set up on the inside. So there's a number of things that you'll notice is slightly different about how I set up for square bounds than for regular. Uh, the first of which is you'll notice that these are not magazine backer boards. These are Time Life magazine boards. The reason I have those is I use those slightly larger um, backing boards. Whenever I have a stack that is more complicated than a normal one. And the reason I like those is they give you a little bit more surface area to work in. And it becomes a little bit less important to get that magazine board exactly where you kind of want it on top. Some people I know like the magazine backer boards. But I find these slightly larger time life boards give me a little bit more freedom. And they just feel a little bit better to me when working with it. The other thing you'll notice back here in the press is I do have that stack of backer boards set up. And what you'll notice is I have it set all the way back against the rear hinge here. And the reason for that is I um, want that stack of backer boards to be up against the comic and I don't want it to be able to slide back out of the way. And so I have that um, set against the back hinge. That hinge does not move, so we don't have to worry about it you know, interfering with the, the motion of the press as it closes. Um, but by sliding it back there, I've given it a firm support in the back. 
And I'm gonna be able to slide my comic book then straight against the side of that. And I've already calibrated this one to be the height that I want as I described earlier. The other thing you'll notice is I have my SRP paper laying nice and flat here, and it's slightly tucked under that stack of backer boards. And the reason for that is if that SRP paper came forward, you know, and I put the comic on top of it and it had even just a little bit of a gap, that SRP paper would leave a line in the comic book. And so I want to make sure that that comic book is fully on top of the SRP paper. And so to ensure that, I've tucked it under those backer boards just so slightly in the stack. All right. So then here I have my comic book, and we're going to do exactly what I kind of said I like to do, which is uh, tuck some regular paper. And uh, while I do this, I'm going to open the comic up, and I'm going to have my fingers splayed underneath that spine to make sure I'm fully supporting the spine. Uh, and I'm going to kind of gently let the wraps fall over my open fingers, but I'm going to hold my fingers up so that the uh, page doesn't fall flat or the cover doesn't fall flat and sl uh, put stress on it. And so I have a nice kind of natural curve there in the comic while I'm putting these in. And I do one under the cover and then I'm going to do one two pages back. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do one four pages back. And the reason I do that is I find if I do every four pages, it's just a little bit shorter than I want it to be. And so the idea of doing one two pages back, and we'll do it two pages back from the cover, is kind of a little tweak I've developed that I like. So that's one page, two page, three page, four page. And we're just going to drop one of these in every four pages. And when I drop it in there, I'm going to try to roll it down a little bit with my thumb and my finger just to make sure it is as tucked against the spine as much as possible and to make sure that it's fitting in there. And we're going to give it a little bit of a tap uh, when we're all done with it just to make sure. But I want to make sure that the paper is kind of sticking out of the top and sticking out of the bottom of the book a little bit as I do this. And it takes me a minute to do this, but I think it's worth it. It's the best way I've seen to be able to do this. So that's three, four. Plus, if I do it this way, I get to flip through the comic and stare at all the beautiful art, which is awesome. It's always a treat when I'm doing a giant size X-Men. I just love flipping through those. Just such a fantastic book. Giant Size just has so many great first appearances. This one's an epic first appearance, though, here. I don't know if Mephisto is going to be showing up in the MCU or not, but certainly he's been a great Marvel character for a long time and definitely makes a great nemesis to the Silver Surfer. All right. So I think that's two back from the cover. So now we're going to put that extra sheet in a couple back from the cover, and then we'll hopefully put one just under the cover here. All right, so just like so. Now I've got them all in there. I'm gonna hold it very carefully and give it a little bit of a tap here on the, the material. Again, I'm lifting this up. It sounds loud, but it's only a, about a quarter of an inch off the table I'm lifting it. And it's just enough to tap it down to get those pages to drop in there as tight as I can get them. Now I'm gonna slide my hand under here so that I've got my finger underneath the corner and my finger underneath the other corner because I want to make sure that those edges don't fall. And I'm going to slide that in there as tight as I can get it against that, that backer material. And if you kind of gently push down on it, you can see that the book is slightly taller or slightly wider than that backing material support back there, which is what I want. Cover it with some SRP paper. Make sure that I've got that fully in, in place. Cover that. With my, make, uh, with my Time Life backer board, and I've got my aluminum plate here to go on top of that. So there we go, that's how I go ahead and set this up, and then let's give it a good squeeze down. Oop. A little bit more pressure on this one than I might like, but I think that'll be okay. Um, and then, all right, here we are. Time to take this book out of the press. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift up here gently, and uh, we'll see how it goes then. Here's our aluminum plate. I'm just going to slide that forward so I can get my hand under there. Importantly, the uh, the spine still looks nice and square if we just scroll right down that. So that's exactly what we want. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the paper out. 
and I do the same thing putting it in I just kind of gently open up my hand and let it sort of curl out from my splayed fingers and just take out the sheets one by one Oop. not the direction I wanted that to go all right that's all of those so get my hand under there to support it uh, and then, you know, in the raking glare here, we can just see if we can find any of those defects. It looks like the finger bend between the L and the V uh, on silver looks pretty good. The finger bend up by Mephisto's head looks a lot better, so that's pretty good. The big bend up on the top corner above the spaceways looks a lot better. Uh, there's still some light bending over here on the spine. Uh, definitely looks much improved from where it was. If we check it out by my kind of where my thumb is across the silver surfer. Um, some of that is unfortunate. Some of it's actually because the staple's right there. So you're never going to be able to flatten it out again because that staple is going to be on the interior. Um, kind of poking on up through so you can kind of see the staple through there. Um, and that always generates a little bit of a... Uh, you know, ripple right around where it's at, which is unfortunate, but that's how the book was constructed. And that back corner, I would say, looks a lot better. So there might be a little bit of, of wave in there if I look right at it, but it does look a lot, a lot better, I think. So overall, this one's much improved. I'm going to go ahead and get that one back in a bag and a board. And that's, uh, that's pretty much how I do the square balance. And so I would say this is probably the most important thing is making sure you have these backer boards in there to help support that, that spine as you set up your press. So with that, hopefully you found this helpful. Please go ahead and give a like, a thumbs up, a subscribe, a follow. Find us on Instagram and Facebook, all under Top Comics Pressing. And we'll try to keep doing these to try to help you uh, both understand more about the process and hopefully help you with your own pressing techniques. So take care, everybody, and Excelsior. All right, everybody, the grade is finally in on this Silver Surfer number three that we've been working up. Just as a quick reminder, this was a CGC 8.5 copy, and we did some uh, really light blue LED work. We gave it a square bound press, and I walked you through that process as well as how I line up all of the, the backer boards. Um, and so let's see how we did CGC 8.5. Here we go, ready, and boom. Uh, this one made it to a 9.4, so that is uh, 8.5 to 9, 9.2, 9.4. So that is a three level grade bump on a book that was already pretty high grade. And so I'm personally pretty excited about this one. Um, and uh, we, we did definitely improve the condition overall. So I'm calling that a win for Top Comics Pressing. And thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate your attention.